today we are going to discuss mental health and we are going to discuss coping uh, with COVID-19 lockdown uh, in regards to mental health. I welcome each one of you. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you and with us today. Once again, for those who have just entered, my name is Masi, Masi Kopsinje. I am a student at Mbara University of Science and Technology in my fourth year. I do a bachelor's degree in medicine and surgery, and um, I am the modulator today. With me are two panelists, uh, Praise and Urban, give opportunity to uh, our panelists uh, to introduce themselves. Uh, just a brief introduction of 30 seconds. Tell us who you are, basically, and then we get into the discussion. Urban. Uh, Urban Valitima. I am a lawyer and a Christian. And uh, I'm so happy to be part of the young people who are discussing a pertinent issue, which is mental health. Of course, well knowing that the mind is the engine of your body. So discussing issues pertaining to the mind, we are basically discussing issues that pertain with your entire life. So it is as important as my life is as important as your life, and I'm glad that this platform provides that opportunity. I'll be blessed as we have the conversation. Background. Um, someone may be asking why of all things we decide to deal with mental health right now. Um, so we have statistics that show that uh, in the recent years, there has been a rise in issues of mental health. By mental health, we are dealing with issues like depression, we are dealing with anxiety, bipolar, many things, stress, acute stress disorder. There are many, many, many disorders that lie under mental health. And interestingly, according to WHO, depression was the second leading cause of disability in 2020, uh, second to ischemic heart disease, suicide was the second leading cause of death among 15 to 19 year olds. Um, it's estimated that about 35% of Ugandans have suffered a certain mental disorder. And this, this is a statistic that actually was before COVID. And now with COVID, it's probably even worse we are looking at about one in a hundred deaths being by suicide. And uh, this has not just uh, affected us, it has also come to the notice of you know, the world. Uh, WHO has a target of reducing suicide by a third, by 2030. And uh, we are seeing very many people, I, I think most of us probably can even pick one person we know who has committed suicide or who, a friend of a friend of a friend who committed suicide and depression and uh, many of these things. Statistics show that ladies suffer depression more, but what is interesting is that guys commit suicide more. So there is an, uh, a discrepancy there. But with that in mind, uh, we get to know that this is actually an issue that is affecting everyone. You might not be suffering this, but probably a friend who smiles at you every day is about to commit suicide because they are depressed and masking it. So it is uh, an honor to have to discuss this and provide solution where we can. Get back to you, Aban. Aban, um, we have, like I've given a, a brief, we have seen a, a, co a growing increase in the issues of mental health and uh, especially even in this lockdown, but in reference to the past, these things were not seen yet even slightly before lockdown, probably, I mean, before COVID, at the beginning of 2019, 2018, we saw a rather tremendous increase in issues of 
lack of uh, mental health, we saw depression, we saw suicide, we saw a lot of these things uh, in comparison with the past, with the years before. So this brings a question to me and that I would want to have your take on. Could this could these issues have always been there and we had never noticed? If, if not, if there is something that actually has caused them before we go into the COVID-19 lockdown, because we do not want to assume that it is the only thing that has caused people to break down. Before the COVID-19 lockdown, we saw that mental health was becoming an issue. So in your own perspective, what do you think could have been the main reason or the, pre, the main reason why we started to see mental health rise, Aban? When we think about mental health, mental health issues have been there since time immemorial. People would have stresses and they would have a number of challenges that, that they would not be able to contain. And even suicide cases have been existing. Why is it at an increase in our days? One, I think the foundation of, uh, of this mental state that we are in rises right from the choices that we make. That in the current situation, people are making more of wrong choices compared to the old days. So it's from the wrong choices that we have made, from the wrong path of life that we have taken, that we are having issues of mental health arising now. So you find that somebody now has a job which is paying him or her good amounts of money, but the person is committing suicide because of the job. The problem is not the job in itself, the problem is on a wrong decision on taking up a job. You find somebody, irrespective of having money, you are, in, you are, you are having a relationship or a marriage, and you are committing suicide simply because you made a wrong choice somewhere in choosing the partner. So I want to say that given our education system, that people simply take on careers because parents say so. People simply take on jobs because I have a relative there. Because of a number of wrong choices and the way we have designed our lives in these days, that is why the issue of mental health is at an increase. That the, you will not excel at it, therefore you will not have the money. And all these will accumulate and finally we shall have mental health issues. So I want to say that the basic problem, the basic problem is wrong choices from the start. Um, thank you, Aban. Um, praise, praise, please uh, say hello to us. Uh, kindly introduce yourself. And uh, I am reliably told you are in the house. My name is Aloikin Praise of the Lodge. I'm nice to be here discussing such a topic of mental health, more so at a time where we see a lot of issues, things like depression, suicide happening. So I'm glad to be here with everyone and I'm ready for the interaction to learn and to teach. All right, praise before you go. Um, Aban just tackled an issue regarding the growing cases of mental health breakdowns. And he says the reason why in our time, in the last few years, we have seen increasing cases of mental health disorders is because of uh, the wrong choices that many people have had to take regarding the, the partners they end up with, the courses, the jobs, and that because people actually make wrong choices of what, what to do, they end up broken therein because uh, initially it was a wrong choice. Do you agree and uh, what more or if not, what do you think is the leading cause or what are the causes that you know are leading to, aside the COVID-19 lockdown that we are yet to uh, dissect? Okay, so 
on the issue of choices. <clears throat> Urban is right to an extent because true, our choices that we make can either break us or make us at the end of the day. And that is an issue regardless of the pandemic or the lockdown that has been consistent. People make choices, wrong choices, and at the end of the day, they find that these choices are depressing, you understand, and psychologically detrimental. That is true. But besides that, I feel like uh, the fact that they, they are no deliberate or like what I mean deliberate, they are not deliberate uh, mental health uh, education services out there or people themselves do not work on developing their mental health. It's like a secondary thing. Like, oh, after I am depressed, that's when I'm going to look for a counselor to talk to. After I find a problem, that's when I will search out for a friend to talk to. So I feel like if people were deliberate with mentally strengthening themselves, even before they actually find themselves in positions that are trying or in situations that are depressing, then they would be like better suited to deal with these issues. But because people do not intentionally or deliberately work on their mental health, you understand, you find that and a situation easily comes and sways them. Comments easily come and sway them. Hardships find them and they easily fall into the situation of depression. But if we could find a way that people mentally strengthen themselves by acceptance of things like, oh, situations could change. Things are not permanent. I could make wrong decisions. I will have to pay for them at a point. And they come to terms with that and accept it. Then the weight of facing the situations at the end of the day could actually be reduced. And you'd find that, oh, people would not easily fall into the phase of depression. Because I believe that depression, uh, depression happens in stages and phases. So before someone gets depressed, it starts as a mere concern. You are concerned about something. Then you get too concerned about it and get depressed. But if we had a, a strategy where our mental health was actually strengthened, then who could end on the point of concern, concern and solution, and not get the point of depression where sometimes we, we blind ourselves to the solution. So I think it is our mental I think it's a lack of a deliberate mental health strengthening for individuals at an individual basis that actually leads to depression, regardless of the situation. Well, thank you. Um, those are powerful points right there, Pray. So Aban thinks it's a decision, uh, the wrong decisions we make. And Praise thinks even in those wrong decisions, it's because initially the people have actually not been mentally strengthened. Those are great, great um, discussions. And now I would like to, to, to take us more to the COVID-19 lockdown. And um, when we look at the COVID-19 lockdown, we have seen people um, stop working. We have seen people stop studying. We have seen people, uh, literally everything, come to a standstill and what people always call the new normal, take, 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 you know, a routine in, in society. And I would like to think that the biggest issue that is causing mental breakdowns is uncertainty, uncertainty of when school will start, uncertainty of whether or not someone will work again. And that lag someone feels you know i am not doing anything with myself and all uh if you agree with me aban um what would you have to say to a person who approaches you and uh, they are breaking down because of uncertainty because they do not know what tomorrow should be like what would you have to say aban respond by first giving you a quote by a British writer, uh, Rose Dow. Rose Dow says, and above all, watch with glittering eyes the whole world around you, because the greatest secrets are always hidden in the most unlikely places. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. So this is a common quote to all of us, that good things are always hidden. And he adds that those that do not believe in magic 
will never find it. A first, while COVID looks and seems to be terribly bad, there is good in COVID. There is good in the lockdown. But it takes only a person who has a positive mind, a person who believes in magic to find the good in COVID. And therefore, to me, what I would say to you and to any person in this time is, can you sit down through that magical eye, try to look for the good things that are in the lockdown, the good things that have come with the COVID time. True, we have lost relatives. True, we have lost money. True, all the bad things have happened and we cannot do anything about them. But can we look for that one good thing within the COVID? I, I have noticed that as, as individuals, especially young people, we have been running all over. From our mother's wounds to school, to primary, to secondary, then to the workplaces, we simply started running before we clearly made a clear plan of our destination. You see somebody running, and the question is, mercy as you're running, where are you running to? The lockdown and the COVID situation has been a stop. Say, hey, mercy, while you've been running all the time, where are you running to? And that has been an opportunity that nothing would bring other than the COVID-19. A time of re-strategizing, first with your life. So I think the reason as to why we were having a lot of mental stress was because we had just started running without knowing how to run and where we are running to. And to me, I want to say, instead of the COVID situation causing you stress, it is one of the things that should be reducing your stress. For you to sit down and say, now that I'm not waking up to run to, to, the, to, to, to the workplace, can you think about your life? Re-strategize, because the engineers tell us you have to take more time on planning, making the plan of your house before you construct a new house. Then you put it down on paper. Then you start with the bricks to construct. And that is one thing that most of us have not been doing. Thank you, Aban. Um, I... I hope you had finished talking, but also because of time, I will uh, request that we, you know, answer a bit briefly, but that is perfect, a perfect expression, a perfect answer that uh, while many of us are breaking down because we think we have too much time to do nothing and to sulk, we actually have a lot of time to pause and think, hold on, <laughs> where was I going all along? So also, maybe uh, in different words, that it is a time for you to plan for what to do next or even take advantage of what you can do because he starts with, uh, with a quote that there are actually good things hidden somewhere. Wow. So if you are here and you were about to, to get depressed, I believe you are on your feet. Uh, praise. While you were answering earlier and uh, you mentioned issues of mental health strengthening. Now we have seen so many people coming up with uh, mental health webinars. We have seen campaigns. And uh, mainly they are raising awareness about mental health, uh, teaching people that depression is like this. You can actually get depressed. And uh, when you feel like this, maybe you are like this. And my question to you is, how effective do you think making people aware of the presence of a condition is in curbing the condition. For example, how, do you, how effective do you think letting people know that depression is real is actually, how, how effective is it in curbing depression? My concern is when, if I have probably been not feeling okay and uh, 
then I get a whole diagnostic criterion of depression. One time now, you know, uh, sulk and um, get into myself and pity myself for fitting in the description that science has to give other than actually getting out of it. Because in many instances, in mental health awareness, it is anxiety is real, depression is real, you're not crazy being depressed. My question is, okay, how actually is this helping in curbing depression? I hope you get my question. Praise. So, uh, like I said earlier, this is like a situation where you wait for a disease and then offer a cure. Yes, it works, but it's not as good as a situation where you prevent the disease. Hmm, like the common adage goes, prevention is better than cure. Well, uh, the, the benefits of knowing something beyond, beforehand are actually, you know, more than not knowing it. It's like knowing that, oh, I'll run out of fuel on this journey. So you carry with you uh, extra fuel, even when you already have fuel. So that when the fuel is done, you actually get more fuel. Well, the fact that you could reach there, find a petrol station, refuel at the end of the day, doesn't do away with the inconveniences, you understand? So here are a number of different webinars that have come up to deal with issues of mental health. But people have already been affected, you understand? So you find that these guys have had time to try and avert this situation. So it's proving to be less effective given the fact that, oh, these webinars are actually online. And yet, you know, like mental health and dealing with depression or things like counseling are more effective with a physical presence, a physical being. So you find that their effectiveness is less. Okay, yes, it's better than not doing anything at all. At, or at the end of the day, because if we have people out there trying to tell people it's okay to be depressed, you can work on this A, B, C, D, don't focus on what you fail to do, focus on what you can do, then it's actually better than a situation where there is no one at all because we are like, oh, it is less effective. So I feel the existence is good, but if they could have come a little earlier before, okay, yes, they existed, but people didn't, it was not like at this rampant stage. It's like people wait for the problem and then they try to find solutions. And yet I feel like if you forecast the problem and then offer a solution to it, then we can even avoid this problem happening at the end of the day. Have they been effective? Yes, but to a lesser extent because they're coming after a problem and it's really hard that they are dealing on an online kind of basis. And yet counseling has different stages that involve things like, you know what? a physical presence, and also the uh, credibility of these people that are counseling also becomes a problem because we cannot really know if they are credible or not. So I think they've been effective, but to a lesser extent. But I also believe that their existence is impacting to an extent positively. Thank you, Praise. Um, so you, you are saying that it is effective, but if... It came earlier. That means someone who is not yet depressed is probably likely to benefit from these things more than the one who is already depressed. Leaving me with a question of what then do we do to those that are yes, depressed? But uh, an, an, an interesting comment in the chat uh, by Bruno Owo, I hope I pronounced the name well, says mental health is real. And um, other big problem is that solvers are a bit theoretical and not practical. We motivators, I think we need motivate. Okay, motivators, which is good, but shallow. I think he's trying to say that people are more theoretical and, uh, and shallow. They don't get to tackle. I, I, will, I will read the, the comments in the chat later, but that caught my attention regarding what exactly we were actually talking about. Uh, so he seems to say that um, uh, people are more theoretical and they actually do not seem to provide solution. They seem to just raise awareness and uh, they tell you when you're depressed, you'll be like this, but there is actually no solution. Let's Let's firstly put a point on that. And uh, Aban, I would like to engage you on um, 
the aspect of the global village. So many times we at, we define global village or in, in layman's language as everyone connected to everyone. Literally, we have friends in the US, we can talk to people in Canada right now, like I am talking to you who is in Uganda. And we would look at this at the surface as it being able to increase socialization that because you can talk to anyone anytime you want in the comfort of your bed, then you should be more social. However, we see that it tends to separate individuals in the sense that we have one personality who is on social media and one personality who is real. We have people who, uh, when it is, when people are talking to others, it seems to be surface. In the olden days, we are told that people used to have in-depth conversations, used to, you know, have conversations. And uh, it is also proved that talking about issues is actually one way of helping to solve it. The English say a problem, you know, what discovered, talked about is half solved, something like that. Um, So do you think social media or the internet or this global village thing has a part to play, especially with the youth? And what is your proposed solution regarding this? Because uh, the background of this is we expect that talking about issues, people sharing, people helping one another is supposed to be a solution. However, people seem to be talking every day, yet never talking about what really concerns them. And at the end of the day, uh, we want to know if social media plays a role and what we can do about it. Aban. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Masi. When we talk about Global Village, we also need to ask ourselves, who is in your village? Uh, Sometimes you could be having a a global village that has no one. You have 500 followers and none of the 500 uh, do you know on a personal basis, but you can claim you have a global village, yet you have none. So those are some of the things and challenges that we have as young people. Uh, I want also to say that Whenever you do not use something good the proper way, then that good thing becomes bad. So social media in itself is not a bad thing comes bad. Social media would have been something that enhances our usual life, that I would talk to five people in my society because I did not have a smartphone. Now that I have a smartphone, I can talk to the five people, but also on top of the five people, I have added on more 20 because I have a smartphone. Now that makes sense. But the problem is I usually had my five uncles around who would advise me, but because I have a smartphone, I no longer even greet my uncles because I'm having my friend in the US whom I do not know. That is where social media becomes a challenge. People no longer have singers to talk to them. People no longer have coders. People no longer have advisors. They are simply on their phones. Now, once you have a challenge in life, who is going to advise you? One, the people in your so-called global village, some of them, their character is questionable. You do not know them. So that is why we are having young people dying in their bedrooms with their smartphones simply because they have lost, they have left a solution in the neighbor's compound. So I would really want to say that the good things that have come should enhance our lives. If we had the things that we had locally, social media and other things should help us advance, but not neglecting what we had earlier. My advice is let us have people in our local village first before we can go to that global village. There are some people who are 20 years, 29 years, 30 years, and they do not have a mentor. And I look at such a person and I'm like, how is this person managing life? 
So when we leave the fundamentals and we just run with the waves that have come, that is how mental health is now becoming an issue. But have a mentor. Have a friend that you can reach to physically and you have a heart-to-heart talk. So basically, I would say, let us use our local village first before we can even go to that global, which is also very useful. Wow. Thank you very much. Um, Aban says we must first deal with the basics, the fundamentals. We cannot leave the basics of human survival and life, and then we run with what has just come. That is a very uh, important topic and a very important point to note. Um, As we come to the conclusion uh, of this discussion, the audience we are coming, I'm going to give opportunity to one or two people to say something. I'm seeing a hand up uh, on Nesmas just uh, a few minutes from now. Praise. Uh, In the same lane with social media, I know you have also a lot to say in that line, but time will probably not give us the luxury of tackling it to the detail. But uh, I have a question for you. So we have many suicide notes, notes, many suicide notes. People have died and committed suicide, yeah? Or uh, social media posts that these people have left behind, like Twitter handle or their WhatsApp status, when people have committed suicide, they seem to show a sort of indirect cry for help that in many instances is is ignored. So many people tend to be guilty that they didn't come in to help in time. Like their friends say, oh my God, I saw her status saying, I am going to do this. And then we, they didn't come in in time. So they feel guilty that they did not come in in time to help when someone was indirectly crying for help. So I have one question that is, that has, that is bifaceted. The first aspect of the question is, is it okay to seek help on social media and hope that someone will take you seriously? Or could there be a better way? Because these people, today you're posting a meme about, you know, ladies and gents, Tomorrow you're posting something that in your heart is serious, but I mean, you ha- you've been a joker on your social media all throughout. So how is someone, so is it really effective? Is it an effective way of seeking help? And then the other aspect of the question is, how do I know that someone's post is actually a call for help, not a joke, uh, since they also may post something while joking? Should I, you know seek everyone who says uh, life is hard and get into their inbox. Uh, This life is is a mess, things like those. Because someone may say life is hard, quoting another, another may say life is hard because they're about to commit suicide. What do you have to say, Praise? In uh, about three minutes. Okay, I will start with the issue of how can I differentiate it's a joke or not a joke, you understand. I think when it is a joke or not a joke. If uh, you find someone, remember, not everyone is going to post a suicide note. For example, you have certain contacts in your phone. I bet the statuses you view are not a thousand. If they they are most they could be 500 and that is stopped but not everyone is going to do that if someone makes a suicide note don't sit down or try to comprehend like oh is it a joke or not the best person you can get that from is the person themselves just say hi is everything okay it's not like this long i know that you don't come with your solutions but no just say okay is anything is anything the matter is it okay is it fine so the issue of if it's a joke or not shouldn't be ours to determine it should be for the person to answer at the end of the day so reach out to them and ask them it's not like oh you're having 300 people at the same time posting that message. You could have five people in a day, 10 people in a day, 20 people in a day. And I think you can sit down and just say that same phrase. Is anything the problem? Yes, I think that is the issue. So you say, okay, for now the victims, is that a better way for them to go out, pour out their hearts and try to get attention? Well, a drowning man will 
catch at a straw or hold on a straw because they feel like that is where their hope can come from. So the, 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 the mechanism used by someone to try and reach out for help is, is we cannot judge them and say, oh, they were wrong or they were right. But I think that this goes back to what Urban said. The failure of people to have immediate people that they can actually talk to about their problems, people they can open up to. So you find that, oh, since they have had this social media life, they feel the best thing to do is to go and try to send an indirect message on their status, on their Twitter handle, trying to say out something like, oh, I need help or something of that sort. Oh, life is hard. Oh, I'm almost giving up. You understand? So that is it. But after someone has done that, after they have like, fail to have immediate people, we cannot continue playing a blame blame game. You reach out to these people and talk to them. So I think like someone has commented down in the section, like if they don't mental health, these are things that should be something like a deliberate move incorporated, for example, in an education system where people know how to know how to tell science if someone is depressed or not, or something that is suicidal in a way or not. So that people reach out for each other because we are human and depression comes along. So I hope that I've tackled the issues in my three minutes and actually something that is more. Yeah, thank you, Praise. Um, allow me to go to the chat. Um, I'll read some because there are really many. But uh, Onesmas Kansi me gives a quote by Prince Harry. The experience I have had is that once you start talking about experiencing a mental health struggle, you realize that Actually, you are part of a big club. Uh, good afternoon. Most youth who are battling de depression should rather be honest about their pain rather than pretending it doesn't exist. That's, <laughs> that's very important. That's Char Charlotte Ndiam Simanta. Uh, Jean Akulo says, good afternoon. Yes, it's true, most youth are battling with depression, but it's hard for them to open up unless someone who went through the same and battled with it gives a testimony and talks to them because naturally they are insecure. Uh, Bruno, I, I had read that. Um, most cases, people rarely admit or know that they are depressed until they start violent acts. Uh, once people are depressed, that's Claire and Babazi, uh, Mugume says, once people are depressed, they tend to act violently. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, depression is a disease that we shouldn't reach there. We should not reach there. Mm. Then uh, Tendo says, mental health indeed is a great challenge because it kills the optimistic part of youth mainly and the tend to see the possible as impossible. Yes, they tend to see that that is possible as impossible. Peter says, do you think counseling services should be integrated in, into the school curriculum and work schedules? How do you think this can be best done if so? Um, okay, uh, that's a question to us, the, to the panel. Um, I was saying, that is Bruno, he was saying, we have motivators, which is good, but they are shallow. We need people who can tamp and refine the convictions of youth. Uh, Jean says, yes, counseling services should be integrated in school curriculum, but at a young age of primary, because most of the young people are affected all the way from their childhood, and by the time they are old enough, they are knocked off easily because they have always had depression and lo low self-esteem. My sister is depressed because people call her black and ugly, and fat, yet she's just in P5. Imagine how shattered she is. Luckily, I talk to her every day at home and her self-esteem has become better. So I think it should start from the youngest stage as possible. And I have many more kids that go through the same every day and I have to talk to them each time. The best way to introduce it is by using people that have faced those battles and have tackled it, using them to talk to the children would really do well. Thank you so much, Akulo Jean. These are very uh, great points. Mbaba's Claire says, I have had and lived with a person under depression. The solution was to get a psychiatrist from Budavika Hospital and we made sure she's off social media because anything negative would affect her thinking. Another thing that helped us was to make sure she interacts with people who are positive and sympathetic to her 
we always discuss with her good news and she was exposed to prayers as well. Eventually she recovered, but it took her over two years. We also advised her to stop self-condemnation. At one point, she's in the village for almost a year and she recovered. Counseling helped her a lot with medication alongside. Social media is both effective and ineffective. It's effective when one posts a relevant post and the reverse is true. As for social media, not everyone is on social media. Secondly, most youth are lazy to watch a 10-minute video talking about mental health. So it's best to send those mental health messages using all types of means, acting, singing, even just talking is okay. This is important, by the way, because while we are talking about sending messages, not many of us can watch that video. Uh, there is someone who sent a link for you to have a conversation on Twitter. I agree with Akuru Joan. We should think about we should think outside the box, the box, especially in promoting songs, because most youth love to listen to music. Thanks, Tim. People having mental health problems are usually very protective of themselves. They fear opening up because they usually get misunderstood. Yeah, important. Uh, I think important things we are seeing is that people fear to open up. And that is why we are having things like these, that if you are here and you're depressed, you better know that you are not the only one and you better seek help because we don't want to lose you. I am going to give an opportunity to only two people, unfortunately, Gerald, you, you raised up your hand last, so you will not probably another time. Ah, okay, Onesmas first. Let's see how long Onesmas takes. Just probably 30 seconds. So is uh, social media, um, does it have an effect on our mental health? Yes, it does. The problem is that social media has made it easier for us to monitor people's lives or to prove our lives to others than speak to them or communicate. Then why are men more likely to face mental illness than women? Of course, from a young age, when a boy cries, they always tell him to behave like a man. And that also takes, uh, it affects how they show their emotions and how they end up not speaking to anyone and then committing suicide. Then the problem is that first of all, mental health is a global pandemic. It is a pandemic, it's not just a disease, it's not just a condition, it is a pandemic. And when you come to Sub-Saharan Africa, and more specifically Uganda, this has not been fully integrated. Mental health has not been fully integrated into public health. We have few psychiatrists. We have only one mental, partial uh, mental hospital. And there is a little attention that is given to, to, to this pandemic. Yeah, this is Bruno. Mm. Uh, Bruno come from Kenya. So I wanted just to comment on the issue of the global villages. You know, inter internet is uh, very, very good. And actually, the global village aspect has helped us a lot. But in, on the other side, it uh, channels a lot of uh, coward youth. It is like generating a crop of coward youth who only know to deal with virtual people and not to deal with real people. So I think the issue of mentorship is very key, that every youth should also have a mentor that they can deal to face to face and maybe tell their issues when they have a problem for them to be assisted. Thank you very much. As uh, people are in a crisis mode right now, especially those startups and those that were laid off, which I think has accelerated the uh, mental health issues amongst young people. However, one of the ideas to curb the crisis is, is the behavior change. I would love to know from Coach Aban, how do you deal, how would you advise young people to deal with the behavior change, especially in times like these, which are very uncertain. Thank you. I would like to dare a question that comes to table today about and Zoom meetings and yet an equivalent increase in depression and suicide. So someone mentions how these sessions usually are focused on theory and not practical. And amongst the the all the amazing ideas that have been discussed today, I would also want to um, imagine that when uh, Ministry of Health, for example, or the leaders in charge dis determine a standard, the way we have a standard requirement check-in for um, 
when you're entering school how you should you know do a medical check check up and check for all these diseases i think we need to also include such a, a platform for mental health because everyone and anyone is also as prone to mental health so a statement for maybe a professional psychologist before you apply for a job or go to school so that this becomes a part of all of us thank you so much thank you tracy uh, over to you bruno brother sorry aban and 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 uh, praise please conclude for us we have uh, a lot not a lot of time with us yeah praise praise first uh, in your last 30 seconds what do you have to say okay so in my last 30 seconds i'll have to say this i'll say something on the issue of counselors if you want someone to help you we should learn to be more direct with our problems because some of us present our problems but we present them in a very indirect manner and then also for our own mental health like i've been saying we need mentors around us but also the society leaders i don't know the government should take it into consideration to make a deliberate effort towards mental health and strengthening of people like inculcating it in the different work spaces in the education curriculum because if people are strong enough then they can face what comes their way not waiting for people to break and then we try to fix them because certain wounds can never live can always live scars and can never be cured that's what i have to say it's been beautiful talking here and learning from everyone's ideas thank you praise aban uh, you had a question that you answer in 15 seconds and your last word in the next 15 seconds Okay I will match that too and I will end by bringing the bad news. The bad news is that stress is around stress is going to come. Problems are around problems are going to come. Whatever causes depression is around and it is going to come. So no one can tell that we are going to solve the issue of stress. That one is coming you should be prepared for it. What is the good news? The good news is that you can develop your spiritual and mental muscles so that when the stress comes you are able to manage it when the problems come you are able to manage them. How do you build these mental and spiritual muscles? Quickly, one, make right choices if you're still a young person. Chances are those that are living their purpose are most likely not to have the issues of mental health and depression and stress. Two, work on your spiritual matters. Have a personal relationship with your God. There are matters you will not handle as a human being. You will always know there is a God who can handle them for me, and you'll trust Him, and you'll not be depressed. Thirdly, get a mentor who can help you build character. Character will help you. overcome over 90% of what causes mental illness and depression i cannot exhaust how you can build your mental and spiritual muscles but that is the solution to mental illness and depression and the like thank you very much i've been proud to be part of this discussion thank you so much thank you praise